Welcome to my channel. I'm particularly excited because this is my first video of 2020 and the first video in a couple of months. I know I've been a little bit on a hiatus unintentionally. I moved uh, apartments, got a cat. It's been a little chaotic, but I'm so excited to talk to you guys about something that I've been really kind of nerding out about lately, and that is getting into personal finance as an entrepreneur. Now, I will say that I have no finance degree. I have really no financial background whatsoever, except for being able to make a good amount of money in my business. And I didn't know anything around personal finance until literally probably a year and a half ago, or maybe two years ago. And I so wish I had started earlier. I am turning 30 in just a few weeks. I'm like, man, if only I'd started investing sooner, if only I'd known more about this, but I, I just wasn't taught. It's funny because none of my coaches really ever talked about this. I didn't really see anybody really talking about anything around what you do with the money you earn. It's just about how to make more, which obviously is really important too, because if you're not making enough money in your business, you know, it's kind of hard to think about profitability or just like paying yourself and things like that. But since my business has been doing pretty well for several years now, it's like, all right, Camila, it's time to figure this stuff out. If you guys don't know me, my name is Camila Gornia. I am the founder of Heart Behind Hustle, and I'm a business and marketing strategist for heart-centered, authentic entrepreneurs that are looking to scale their businesses with heart and build their brands into movements. No one really taught me personal finance. I was actually kind of like overwhelmed by just the thought of investing and it, it just all sounded so complicated that I didn't even want to look at it to be honest. I just wanted to make money, make more. But the problem that was happening in my business <laughs> is that regardless of how much money I was making or even if I had like lower months, I still had the same amount in my bank account regardless of what was happening. I basically had this conclusion because of that. We typically probably have some kind of a set point in terms of our income or how much we have in our bank account. And when I say a set point, you know, this is a typical thing in weight loss. We tend to be around the same maybe five pound range regardless of what we do, right? If you're eating Normally, you're typically within the same five pound range. And it can be a little bit, little bit tricky for people to move beyond that set point and get into a new set point that's like a natural weight for your body, basically. And I've had to go through several of those in my lifetime as well. I notice it's the same thing with my bank account. I know I hear this from my clients all the time too. It's like, hey, no matter what, I tend to have less than you know X amount in my bank account. No matter if I make a lot of money during a launch or if I'm just kind of cruising, it's still the same amount. And it's kind of weird. What I realized and what I learned is that our spending is going to basically adapt and shift based on how much money we're making to accommodate this specific set point that we have in our bank account. So I noticed that since my money tended to be around the same amount in my bank account, um, my spending would either increase or decrease based on how much money I would make in a single month. And sometimes, actually often, what would actually be happening is I would be investing in things that I really didn't need to invest in. What I learned in Profit First, and this is something that I've implemented in my own business over the last two, maybe three years, is basically having some bank accounts um, kind of separate from each other so that you're hiding money away from you. As you're making money and it's all funneling into one bank account, it's a good idea for you to have like separate debit accounts that you can move some of this money like for taxes or whatever, you can move money towards like a savings or whatever. So that's basically what I started doing. Well, the first thing I did is I, um, I, I started being taxed as an S corp. So I could actually start paying myself a salary. So it's like, I'm an employee, I guess, uh, of my S corp. And it makes a lot more sense because my taxes are being paid monthly and, or every, with a paycheck and, and stuff like that. But the thing is, I actually started to create additional, uh, bank accounts in completely different, like, financial institution so that I never had to look at that money. So I implemented this inside of my personal financial things and in, in business as well. So within my business, I actually have two bank accounts or two debit accounts, one for money coming in, I call it incoming revenue. And I have one for operating expenses. I actually don't really need those two accounts because it's within the same um, login. So it doesn't really have that same effect because I, I see the, the total amount and it's the same thing. But with my personal, I do have my personal account 
on a separate login and I have another debit account that's like kind of like emergency money. Then what I started to do, and this is completely not even related to Profit First whatsoever, but I actually started to look at being more intentional with using credit cards to rack up cash back. So for me, cash back is more important. I'm not a huge points person um, and I've, I prefer to make cash back because it's more tangible to me. So I could buy everything that I'm planning on buying and making the investments in like Facebook ads or a con contractor or a coach or a course or a program that I actually want and making 1.5 to 2% back in cash back from that purchase. I actually recently signed up for another American Express card, which gives you 2% cash back on your business. And plus like you get like a credit or something. I don't even remember. I'm going to drop some links in the description for you to check out. Another thing that I did is I signed up for American Express platinum card, which sounds super fancy. And the card is like awesome. It's like super thick and is, is just like, I feel super fancy anytime I whip it out. I signed up so I could get a free year of WeWork. Uh, signing up for an American Express Platinum card was an amazing savings basically for me. Even though it's about $500, I was able to get a free year of WeWork membership, which a, there's a WeWork like a, a block away from me. So I like to go and co-work there sometimes. And typically a year of WeWork is like, I don't know, like $3,000, maybe almost $4,000. So it's like a huge savings. Like it's, it's awesome. Cause I was planning on signing up there anyways. You do also get a bunch of other bonuses, especially if you travel a lot, it's really great. I don't travel as much as I used to, but um, you know, having lounge access is obviously a great benefit at different airports and, um, we did, you get credit for Dell and like a bunch of other really cool things. So I do have a link for you in the description as well to check that out. If you use it, I will get a little commission if you sign up. So definitely appreciate it. Um, thank you. I actually started to learn more about personal finance earlier in 2000 and, or mid 2019 is from reading Ramit Sethi's new book. Well, it's the same, it's the old book, but it's a new edition. I will teach you to be rich. Amazing, literally changed everything for me because I, was so overwhelmed about just even the thought of investing. I thought it's the most complicated thing in the world. I just didn't know anything about it. And I didn't really work, uh, before I had my business full time, I was working in a marketing agency and they didn't do a 401k. So I, I, I didn't really know anything about this stuff. So I was able to learn about starting a Roth IRA account. And because I pay myself a salary, I am able to basically max out my Roth IRA. So I signed up for that can max out $6,000 in a year into that investing account. And it's just like the simplest thing ever. I selected a target date fund and it's like so excited to look at it. Um, I signed up for it, I think six months ago. And so I've had it for six months and I've, I've maxed it out this in 2019. And just from like having it in a target, target date fund, it's already made me like 500 bucks, which is cool. And I know that it's going to go up and down and things like that, but it's just like so epic. It's an automatic, um, you know, I just have money coming into it every month without me noticing it. And that's the other big thing that I learned too. I mean, I learned this back a couple years ago, but just having everything on auto pay, like literally saves my life because I don't remember otherwise to pay my bills. I just don't. I feel kind of overwhelmed by having to like remember dates of like, when is what due? And then, oh my God, I forgot to pay this credit card and blah, 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 blah. Which by the way, I do pay off my, my credit cards um, in full every cycle. So obviously I, I think a big thing that he talks about is that if you have debt, you know, pay off the debt first, which I don't have any debt, which allows me to basically be able to get into investing and things like that. But um, I put everything on auto pay and it also started to actually recently, like literally a couple of days ago, I started to, I was like, man, I really want to, because of how much I saw I made from the Roth IRA, well, I didn't make it, but it's like, I guess I did back to reinvesting because of like $500 in six months from the Roth IRA, I was like, oh my gosh, I want to get into like regular investing too, like regular investing. So I started going through like all these YouTube videos. I was like mind blown. There's so many amazing videos on YouTube. I was like, holy crap. All of a sudden I like understood general investing and I'm not an expert by any means. Don't ask me questions about this because I literally just, I just started learning. And this is more like a behind the scenes, like what's going on in my life type of video. I created, in addition to that, I created a general investing account with Vanguard. I started to put money into index funds, which is like super exciting too. I don't have that on automatic payments or uh, things in there yet. I think it's going to be more based on like, you know, I have a good month and instead of spending it on like a random software or a random, I don't know, uh, 
thing that I don't really need, I'm going to invest it. It kind of has shifted my mindset a little bit. So my personal credit card payments tend to be a little bit high every month because I just like, I'm a little impulsive with my purchases, to be honest, because like the money's there. I'm like, oh, whatever. Like, let's just, let's just, whatever. And it's not good, right? Like, it's not, it's not a good thing. Now I always have been pretty smart with money. So I never, I've never been in debt. Um, I am a very mindful and aware of how much money I have. So if I like, I never go to a level where I'm like uncomfortable or anything like that. So it's not like I'm like spending frivolously without any thought. <laughs> so um, it's not anything like that. But it is, I definitely have noticed that I was spending money on things I didn't really need to spend money on, particularly on eating out, you know, and especially delivery. I was spending a lot of money on delivery food, even though I could totally just get groceries and, you know, once a week and pay way less. And sometimes I would even get groceries and then not use them because I just didn't feel like it. And I and have the taste to make something or like a, whatever because I don't like cooking and I would just get delivery which is like 20 to 30 bucks every time obviously I have to hit the free delivery thing doing it a couple times a week it definitely adds up you know so I started to um it, yeah it just wasn't a good idea and I had to shift that mindset too of like well all that money could be going into investing instead or could be going into savings, you know? And because I started to actually have like savings goals and things like that, it was like, well, I'd rather put that money into savings and eat something out of my fridge that's already there because if I don't eat it, it's gonna go bad. And it was like literally a waste of money. So I know for some of you guys that may be more financially savvy, you're probably like, what the heck, this girl's crazy. Like these are such obvious things, but like when you're in it, I guess it wasn't as obvious, <laughs> if that makes sense. I'm being totally just like, totally open with you guys right now. But um, yeah, so I signed up for a meal delivery service instead that I get like twice a month. I started to freeze the food because I had to, I had to throw out the food several times because I like didn't eat it in time. But I'm very committed to like making sure I'm making the most out of the things that I buy this time so I can, you know, spend less on things that are going to be going to waste. And the other thing that I also started doing, so I started a high yield savings account, which is like, why wouldn't I have done that earlier? But I just like didn't know about it because no one taught me again. No one taught me this stuff. I just like wish they would teach this in school because I, no one taught me. Anyways enough pity party. So I started that. I, I started a personal savings account with Amex as well. It started, they started me off at 2.1% and it has dropped since then to like 1.7, but it's really good. And I feel actually a lot more excited about hitting a savings goal versus hitting a revenue goal now, because it just means more to me. It like means that it's money that I can play with. It's money that I don't have to like freak out if I have a low month because like anything can happen in business. It just feels so much better to have a little a bit of a buffer in savings and I'm not planning on dipping into that savings like ever because I have a pretty hefty goal I would love to have like two hundred thousand dollars in savings but although now that I know more about investing I probably won't have that much money in savings itself because it's silly like I'd rather have that have, have that in investing which is a higher percent of return so that's that goal is going to have to be revised but basically the whole gist is that I'm just being a lot smarter with money, you guys, and it's really exciting. So I know all the things about how to make the money, which is great, but not so great if you don't keep it ever, you know? So it's just been really, really good to be able to start finally making smarter financial decisions for my future. So before I uh, let you guys go, there's two other things. So as you guys kind of learned, I tend to buy pretty quickly. I make decisions very fast, which I think is an important quality for an entrepreneur to make decisions very quickly versus sitting on them. But if, you know, using that quick decision making for buying things is not ideal, especially if I see like an Instagram ad and I'm like, oh my God, I need it. And I buy it. And then like five minutes later after buying it, I'm like, damn it, why did I buy this? Right. And uh, that's obviously like a total, like I shouldn't have purchased that thing. I should have just like, like thought about it. So something else I started doing is just not buying things so quickly, right? So there's actually a few steps that I tend to go through now or I'm trying to go through when it comes to purchasing something. First is asking myself, do I really want this? Second is why do I want this? Third is will I really use it or am I just acting impulsively? Because that's how I've been. And four is uh, basically not a question I ask, but more like waiting a couple days before I buy it. So I, if I see an ad on, on Instagram, I'm going to message that ad, share it to my other account so I can have it saved. And then I just kind of think about it. And honestly, 
most of the time I just forget about it, which is perfect because it means I shouldn't have bought it. It would have been an impulse purchase. But other times I'll actually sit on it and I'll think about it and I'll like walk through shit. I'm like, oh, if only I had that course, like that would be great. I, I could actually do this and that. And I think about it. And if I keep thinking about it, thinking like, oh, I wish I could have this thing, it's probably a good idea to make that purchase or investment, right? Because I still... I still value investing in myself. That's always going to be my number one priority is investing in myself. Um, you know, working with coaches that actually I know can help me purchasing or investing in courses, contractors, advertising, all these things are really, really important to grow my business. So I'm not going to skimp on things that are essential, but I am going to be a lot more smart with spending money on things that are not serving me or I can replace with automation or I can, um, not have or what have you to be a lot more lean and a lot more streamlined. If you like this video, I would love for you to go ahead and subscribe and hit that like button. I, I'm planning on creating more videos for you guys because I haven't been here in a while and that is one of my goals in 2020 is to create more videos for you guys. So um, yeah, that's basically that. Thank you so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you inside of my community and we'll see you in the next video.